Hey, Coach. How's everything going? Just, I guess, yeah, kind of go to the like, state of the Mustangs right now here in uh, mid-April. Probably wet, but other than that, we're good. I, mean, I think we've gotten better every day. I love the effort that we're getting from our players, and I think we're doing the right things and making sure the guys that we want to evaluate to see exactly where they are as players are getting the opportunity to get a lot of repetitions. And as always, you know, the, the biggest concern is injuries, and we've had a few of those as well. And talk about the injuries. I mean, are these kind of just freak things, or I mean, what, what, are, are, you know, what's happening as they're causing the injuries? Is it just anything you can prevent, or is it just one of those things that happens? I hate to say it, but it might be the game of football. But <laughs> some of it's been luck. I mean, you know, Asa Jackson was just doing a one-on-one -on -one drill and was running a press technique and pressed with his left hand, and at that point on, that was it the rest of the spring anyway. So uh, he, he's had that corrected, and he'll be back. He's on a hamstring, Brandon Williamson. Uh, collarbone. DJ has been out just because of uh, off-season work that he had done on it. Gabe Umo has been, Umo has been out lately, and uh, we need to get him back so we can get him more repetitions to find out exactly where he is. Uh, but the injuries are going to happen. We're just uh, thankful that they're not going to be uh, injuries that affect, uh, number one, the season next year, and number two, the guys that have had them are guys that we pretty, feel pretty comfortable about what they can do and what they can contribute. I hate to say that, but that's kind of a fact. And therefore, it's given some other young players the opportunity to get some more repetitions. That's what I was going to ask you. I mean, uh, in terms of the injuries, I mean, nothing too serious in, in regards to this coming season. And I mean, how much of a setback is it to have guys not out there right now um, that you'd like to, be, you know, like to see out there? Well, I think on the defensive side of the ball, it definitely hurts the rhythm of who we are and who we want to be as a unit. But uh, that's because you're playing with some inexperienced players at different positions because of the injuries, and it's affected both safety and corner. Uh, but that's, it, that's what spring is also about, is finding out who get, what guys can have the opportunity to play with your ones and show that they belong to play with their ones. I think that gives you a good feeling for next year that guys are stepping up and showing what talents they have. In terms of the offense, and you know, had some inconsistencies last year. Uh, what, what, what have you seen so far, and what can you tell us about how the offense is hopefully progressing right now? Well, I think number one, a lot of guys are getting repetitions, and a lot of guys in a lot of different positions are getting repetitions, and that can lead to inconsistencies as well. The Andre Rodas and Tony Smith, they they rotate every group or team series who goes with the ones and who doesn't. So uh, there's a little bit of a change there. Andre, uh, in the scrimmage on Saturday, did some things that we expect Andre Rodas to do with the football teams. He made some incredible eight-yard runs that maybe should have been one-yard losses. And I think that those are the things that we know Andre can do. And uh, it actually played pretty well. And in the first uh, eight to nine plays of the scrimmage, they went about 70 yards and was the best of the offense operated that entire day. So he had a big day Saturday, which uh, is we're hoping to see young players like him evolve into what they can become in order will help us be maybe a little bit more explosive as an offensive football team uh, than we were last year. Is spring football practice, do you run it? Is a competitive practice to where these guys are competing for positions on the depth chart and eventually a starting position later? Well, I think if we're, for where we are, there, there, there's guys competing for roster spots. You know, because we're only allowed to have 90 guys when we start next fall. There's guys that want to be on that 90-man roster when we start. So it starts there, and then it works upward. I mean, then and now you start working through the depth chart and exactly where you fit, number one where we see you fitting, number two, and probably most importantly to me, is where we are as a team from a depth standpoint, a one through eight on the defensive line, for example. You know, we're right now, we're preaching that we think we have ten guys that can contribute on the defensive line, and I think that that's good. That's much better than where we were a year ago. But some young guys, Giovanni, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, Sullivan Gross has stepped up uh, this spring. He had a great Saturday. It wasn't too good today, but he's one of those young guys at 6'3", 265, that's big enough and strong enough. He's one of the strongest guys on our team where he can give us meaningful downs, and he's proven that he can. And that's the most important thing, that he proves it by how he plays in the scrimmage opportunities that he gets, how he plays in the individual opportunities he gets. And that's just one example of uh, what I really think the spring is about for us here, is we need to be a better football team. And when you say that, it's if you lose one guy at one position, it doesn't decimate you. And I think we feel much better about, for example, the defensive line, the offensive line. I know you would want it going into the recruiting process and even now. Your wideouts, you were uh, outside of Dominic Johnson. You were, I don't want to say concerned, but it was an area you really wanted to improve at. But look, how, how is that looking uh, through spring practice? Well, I think that uh, three guys stepped it up. And what they did Saturday at practice probably was the thing I was most impressed with the wide receiver position on Saturday was 
uh, the fact that uh, Callum Moriarty, Cougar Williams, unfortunately Cougar got a little tweaked in the drill that we did, uh, but Eric Garley had an opportunity to add one-on-one -on -one drills against the corners and the safeties, which is basically 90% block, and it's physical because the defender usually knows that it's run. Now, we do throw in a few passes and things like that, but it's, it's as physical as it's going to get for a wide receiver, more physical than a game because the, it's really a defensive drill. And all three of those guys stepped up and proved they could do that part. I think all three of them were already proven that they can run, run routes and catch the football. But in our offense, that's huge. But even more importantly, the physical part, the ability to show that they can block, gave us a lot more confidence in all, th confidence in all three of them than maybe we had going into spring. So I really think that that's turning into a strength. I think Mike Anderson's doing a good job. I think uh, Josh Swainy's improved, which allowed us to move Ryan Taylor to defense, which might give us some added depth there. And we already know what DJ can do. So that gives us three X's and three Z's. So we feel good about where we are. Allow me to throw in one question.